the, the part I highlighted. It, they're talking about documentation and tracking and proper clothes and things that you know you should do it, but you don't really want to. I'm thinking, really? This is a business they're trying to build. They're trying to tell you, well, there's things you have to do, but you don't want to do them. But I'm thinking in our business, you know, we're heavily regulated. We dot the I's, we cross the T's. Wanting to doesn't really enter into the picture. So I didn't, fi I didn't find this particularly helpful. I thought it was uh, in, in instructive that there's a group out there that's talking about virtual operations, and when they're talking about it, they're clearly talking about something that doesn't resonate with me. So, for the purpose of, of looking at, say, distinguishing outsourcing and a subset of that virtualized operation, the things that are really, uh, you know, everyone knows about outsourcing, typically in my experience, it's all about cost control. Uh, and there's the, the general perception that outsourcing is somehow intrinsically good, and, um, and I would say sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't work out, and I think perhaps some of the reason is, at least again in my experience, um, there's, there are things missing from the thought process that leads up to the decision to go outsourcing and how you choose a partner, et cetera. For me, when I think about it, these are the things that drove um, my decisions about what I'm trying to accomplish when I'm thinking about virtualized operations. Now, obviously, there's some there's headset flexibility. Sure, that, that's common between the two and not too surprising. But my focus really wasn't <coughs> on cost per se. The focus was how do I apply the resources I have available to relate to these business objectives most effectively. And um, that really talks about predictability. Um, and when I talk about business focus in this particular case, it's internal. But I, we talk, you've heard other guys, people talk about core competencies. Um, this was an opportunity for us to think about what is it that we do well, what are the things we want to do well, and what are those parts of our business that um, <coughs> may sit outside of that, and those are really good candidates for them looking for partners who do that well, maybe better than we can do it ourselves. Um, and better um, is, is something we can learn from, and I think that's one of the things that maybe goes unstated. Um, <coughs> we do, you know, these my, my companies that I've worked for, we do some of these things really quite well, the full spectrum of biometrics related activities, but I think we can always learn from people whose core business it is, is to do that. So some of the, the key elements of, of this, um, and for me, alignment of interest between the sponsor and the service provider is something that is often missing in what I would describe as typical outsourced operations. In fact, they're often uh, at odds with each other. If you think about you know, late phase studies and what have you, let's say clinical operations or data management or outsourcing that, if the service provider wants the biggest study possible to go as long as possible to maximize revenue, the sponsor wants just the opposite. The small study as possible, the shortest time as possible. How do you align those interests? So I think those things, and that's why, because they're often not intrinsically related and aligned, you find you have to spend a lot of time working with contracts. The contracts will figure in here. And I'm just going to have a, a word or two to say about contracts. Um, the next thing, and again, this is both for the benefit of the sponsor and as well as internally, is to really think about what are we trying to achieve through this particular outsourcing or virtualized operations um, and, endeavor. And that's particularly important, at least for when I'm working with my own staff, and I'll talk about this when we get to the case studies, to be able to talk internally about why we think this is a good idea, what does it mean for staff internally, as well, of course, in, in working with potential service providers on ensuring their ability to meet those objectives. So, can this be read in the back? Is this, uh, does this, you know, if we migrate <coughs> enterprise applications to the web and outsource our sales and product development, the entire company can be managed by a monkey, uh, plus a second monkey to look at the PowerPoint slides from the first monkey. <laughs> Um, so I, I think about, yeah, is, is that the objective we're going into? If the objective is to be managed by one monkey, um, then maybe that's not a bad way to go. But if we don't give an awful lot of thought as to what it is we're trying to accomplish fundamentally, this might be where you end up. And then these are things, again, depending on the nature of the outsourcing or virtual operation, well-defined in-house processes, and so we want process standards. Uh, it's much easier to talk to pr prospective service providers if we kind of know how to do this work. We have, a, we have good ways of doing it internally. And then a transparent, easily understood service provider processes. 
So this may be a case where service providers know this better than we do, but if they can't actually explain that to us, uh, it makes it hard for us to have confidence in our ability to deliver. So one, having one or, or both of those, in my experience, has been really important. And uh, ideally, um, deliverable standards, so that at the end of the day, quality, we know what the quality looks like before we, we take the first step, and both sides recognize what that quality looks like. We have easy ways of, of, of saying, yep, this is, what we, this is what we asked for, this is what we need, is what you delivered, of, you know, is there a match? So, I mentioned earlier, I just want to have just, just a word about contracts. Um, and this one's a little bit longer, so again, I don't know if it's visible in the back, but it's, it, the, the pointy-haired manager says, is there any risk that the new software will erase our payroll data? And of course, I don't know. Well, did you ask the vendor that question? <laughs> well, no, and so, so you can't be sure. Well, you know, we outsource the payroll service. The payroll data isn't even on our servers. Isn't everything connected to everything else on the internet? So, so you want me to ask the vendor that his software will hunt down our payroll data from across the internet and try to kill it. And you think he might say yes? Better safe than sorry. The last thing goes, now here's the vendor. Yeah, sometimes it does do that. You're the first one to ask. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, you know, shoot me. So, you know, for me, again, this gets to the issue, and I don't know if you this at some point. In my experience, contracts tend to be much more important in the generalized context of outsourcing and the virtual operations, as I said earlier, to the degree you're able to sort of link the interest of the sponsor with that of the service provider, you find that the contracts are still remain important, but they're not, they're not necessarily key. Um, that is to say, you, you, you develop this, this sense of trust, and which brings me to, to the whole reason I structured the talk around trust. I think you know, ultimately, when we make a decision to hand our baby, whatever it is, in, in the case of one of the case studies I'll get into in just a second, uh, you know, a big chunk of the NDA. This is the part that is most difficult to achieve. It's the thing that is often never discussed explicitly and never looked at. And in my experience in getting into these sort of relationships, uh, it's, it's critical. This is for me the critical element because it's ultimately, if you're spending all of your time monitoring and you're not going to be realizing the cost, and that, that is going to be a difficult relationship to maintain over time. Which, I think we're okay. So, so we talk about trust, and I'm going to talk about another context for it. The, the pointy haired manager, I hired a consultant to help with our virtualization project because I don't trust employees with anything important. The consultant, well, I'll do the heavy thinking while each of you performs your usual duties as obstacles to progress, right? <laughs> uh, and Bill Bringer, he said, This is my project. He said, No, I'll let him unplug something. So, again, and I, I look at the projects that I've, I've had a hand in, in putting forth, and, and I said, my focus has often been on my staff. How is it affecting my staff, and how do I get them to sort of embrace and support it, and what have you, to have their trust that this is actually makes business sense, it's good for their careers, sort of good all the way around. As you see, often, often missing. So, let's dive into the, the case studies. Um, these are fairly quick. The first one, I talk about a functional objective. Here, we, the, the idea was to build uh, a virtual data management operation, in this case, offshore. And um, I have to say, it wasn't my decision to go that route. And when they hired me, they said, sort of, we've made that decision. It's your job to make it successful. So make it happen. So that was, that was actually kind of fun and not easy. And the next one was deliverables objective. And this takes us very current. This is actually why I'm, why I'm here today. And we have to the request of the, the folks that take solution because that's what we ask them to do. So again, when we were looking at building a data management function offshore, we had data management staff, and they were actually quite good. Um, we, we, though, we were doing lots of studies, and our costs from year to year were all over the place, depending on the study go forward, whether it canceled early, et cetera, et cetera. We wanted to be able to do some cost predictability over one year and over the course of the contract, which was a five-year contract. So that was one of 
the objective, and again, so it wasn't necessarily cost management or 